Hi guys and welcome to another video and as you can see I'm obviously in an incredibly beautiful place. I'm in southern Utah and you can see the the creek behind me here. Apparently this has trout in it. I've never fished it. I've never been here before. I've been to this general area several times but I've never been in this canyon and I've never fished this creek. I have seen one other video of someone fishing this. Shout out to Flicky Flies on YouTube. I saw his video a year or two ago whenever it was first posted and I thought, wow, I know exactly where that is. So it's been on my list for a while and I'm excited to finally fish it. And I'm excited to finally fish with this rod. This is the Tenkara USA Rodo. This is the first Tenkara USA rod that I've ever owned and that I've ever fished with. It's a zoom rod. It can be fished at three different lengths. 10 foot 6 inches, 9 foot 9 inches, and 8 foot 10 inches. And that is 320, 300, and 270 centimeters. So let's get the gear all together. Let me put a line and fly on this, and then we'll hit the creek. Okay, so I've got the rod in its longest length. It's about 11 foot length. And I have a an Idaho Killer Kabari fly on here, because that's what was was already on the line. Uh, I haven't really looked at this creek yet. I haven't seen any fish in here, um, but I just saw this and thought that looks kind of fishy, like the corner over there. I'm not entirely sure if there are fish this far, this low in the creek. I might have to walk another two or three miles upstream. I'm just not sure. And this is pretty good looking trout habitat. This pool right here is, is perfect. I'm not getting any bites. It's quite deep here. I don't know how well you can see that. I know you can never really see into the water very well on camera, even with the polarized filter on there. Uh, but it's at the deepest, it's maybe a foot, or, foot and a half or two feet deep over there. So sufficiently deep. Initial impressions of this rod are good. It casts nicely. Again, if you have to think about, this is something that I mention a lot, if you have to think about your casting, then it's not the rod for you, or it's not a very good rod, or you, you just aren't used to that rod. But this one right away, I, you know, I didn't think about, I haven't been thinking about it at all. I've just been casting. It's been working well with my casting style, or I've been working well with it, however you want to say it. And yeah, okay, last cast in this spot. Okay, there's more water in here than I thought there would be. This is a, a larger creek than I thought that, that it would be. That's fun. Oh, there's a fish. Just saw my first fish cruising. It saw me, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, it, it moved over into the undercut bank over there. Fairly certain it saw me, okay. Well, that's good. There are fish down here. There are fish down, down low, this, this, this low. And that was a pretty decent fish. Looks to be nine or 10 inches, which for a little desert creek like this is perfectly fine with me. I'm happy to catch fish like that all day. Oh, just spooked fish number two. And I think it just spooked another fish or two, so. <laughs> I think in general today, the trick is going to be approaching these fish without spooking them. It's very, very clear water. That's a sunny day. Fish on! Got him. Awesome. Awesome, guys. We caught a brown trout. Nice red spots on the side. Fly is out. Beautiful brown. See you, buddy. Awesome. 
<laughs> that feels really good. So that fish was downstream of that small boulder and there it was in that large pocket below that boulder. Right about in the middle, I think. Awesome, let's catch some more. Yeah, this is the kind of area I need where it's dark and in the shade and there's some, you know, some, there's some ripples. The water, the surface of the water is a little bit broken up versus this, which is a hundred feet of completely flat water in the sun. This is more difficult to fish. I see one. Got him. Yes. That was another one of those fish that you don't see until after you've already cast, I think. I think I'd already cast and then I saw the shadow move around. Nice fish. Fat little guy. Great. That's two. Let's catch another 30. Slowly moving down the pool. I'm not seeing any fishy shadows. Of course, right when I said that, I saw one swim off. Might be the one I just caught. That one did swim off in that direction. So this pool is probably tapped out, probably played out. But let's try fishing. Doesn't hurt to try. Just look at this. I'm just almost completely <laughs> covered up by rock here. Okay, focus. Focus on the task at hand. The fishing here is very slow, both in terms of the number of fish I'm seeing and catching, and also just the speed at which I'm moving upstream, because I am having to be careful not to spook these fish, because there are a lot of flat, glassy sections. It's just very slow going. Somehow, and at some point, I lost my fly. That is weird. Okay, well, I'll tie on a new one. As I was pulling out my tippet, because I needed to replace the tippet and the fly there, uh, as I was pulling the tippet out of my little pouch here, a fly came with it. I guess I had stuck this fly down in there at some point in the past. So I'm fishing a kind of beaten up, but still serviceable looking fly called the, what is it called? A, a viewer sent these to me, Carl sent these to me, the well-hung foam spider, I think is the full name. So I'll use this fly until I lose it or until it just disintegrates. Got one. I saw it barely break the surface. I saw a, a boil on the surface. It's bigger than the others I've caught, I think. Maybe it's just fighting harder. It's a little bit bigger, maybe. Great, feels good to catch another one. Fantastic. See you, buddy. Another brown trout, of course. Yeah, there was kind of a glare on the broken surface. It's a little bit ripply here. I couldn't really see the line or the fly very well, but thankfully the fish just barely breached or it just, I saw the swirl there and it was not a motion that I had caused. So I thought, well, that's probably a fish. And it sure was. Got one.
in the net. I'm surprised at how healthy these fish are. These are not skinny little brown trout. They're they're healthy looking, they're chunky. And these are, by the way, wild fish. These are not obviously native to here, but they are wild. All right, man, it feels good to catch fish. <laughs> I'm coming off of a long winter of not fishing very much and I missed it. I really did. The wind is picking up here. Fish on. That was just a couple casts after landing that last fish. The wind is annoying, but it's helping me because it's making the surface of the, of the water less glassy and uniform. Come on. That's definitely the biggest one so far. Fantastic. Beautiful fish, really nice. 10 or 11 inches. Got one. Man, this is a, ooh, it's a good fighter. This is a hot spot, this area. Ooh, it's fighting. And that I think is an even bigger fish, six and six. Yeah, that's a 12 incher. Wow, <laughs> it keeps getting better and better. 12 inch brown trout here, loving Carl's fly. Fantastic. Fish on. I did see that one. I saw the line go down. Another one in the net, in the bag. By the way, I always wet my hands before I touch fish. Even if you don't see me do it, I always do it. Like I don't want to touch a gross slimy fish with dry hands, that's disgusting. <laughs> so like, if you don't see me do it, that means I've probably cut the clip, I've cut the footage, cut that part out. It's the same reason you don't always see me take the, the hook out of the fish's mouth. Like I'm not gonna include that every single time, but I do always wet my hands. I have no desire to ever touch a trout with dry hands. That's just kind of gross. I'm gonna fish for another about 20 minutes, 20, 25 minutes. Let's see if I can get another one. Looks like it's getting pretty deep out here. Three, maybe four feet. No luck so far. Again, I didn't see the line move, but I saw the swirl on top. I was a little bit late with setting the hook because of that, but seems okay. Got a fish on. And in the basket, four and seven, yeah, about 11 inches. Another great sized fish. Really nice. All right, couldn't get anything else out of this pool. We've got 10 minutes left. Let's keep going. Oh, I just spooked a big fish. It's hanging out along the bank on the left. I think it took shelter somewhere over there. Here's another one. But I spooked it. Yeah, they can see me coming before I can see them, unfortunately. I'm hoping to snipe another fish in here to 
sight fish one in this very sunny section. But again, that involves going very slowly, taking my time to scan the water, looking for that shadow out here in the full sun. Oh, the little arch. Can you see that little hole in the rock? No time. Got to catch a fish. Got one. Didn't know I had one on. I was recasting. Yes! This is so awesome. This is so much fun. Man, I love fishing. This fly is toast. Almost all the hackle is gone. Yeah, now it's just like... Well, I'll take a picture of it when I'm done fishing, but I want to finish fishing this little section ahead of me here, then I'll call it a day. Okay guys, I think that'll do it. I think I'm gonna call it here. What a beautiful stream. What a beautiful place to fish. And the fishing was great. <laughs> I had so much fun. I'll show you a picture of the destroyed fly here. Thanks again to Carl for sending those to me. I think that was the last one that I had. And uh, awesome fishing today. Had a great time. The rod, I really enjoyed the rod. I landed nine fish. I didn't lose a single one. Not sure what exactly to put that down to. Could have been the rod, could have been, I don't know. I mean, I had plenty of space to fight fish in this creek. A lot of times when I lose a lot of fish, the creeks are really small. And when it's hard for me to, to net the fish, the creeks are really small. But here I had plenty of room to, to fight the fish and to net the fish without there being a ton of branches and, and weeds for the, the line to get stuck on, for the net to get stuck on. And then again, it could just be the rod. Maybe the rod is just like the, the perfect rod for this creek, for the size of fish in here, for the size of the creek itself. Really enjoyed the rod, the Tinkara USA Roto. I've seen people talk about this rod online for a long time. The general consensus is that it is a good rod. And I agree, I really like that rod. First. Tinkara USA rod. Uh, it's a little bit pricey. I think it, that in general Tinkara USA rods are a little bit overpriced compared to some other rods you can get out there, but still great rod. Really enjoyed it. I'll fish with it again in the future, I'm sure. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching. Let me know what you think. Let me know if you have any questions and I'll see you in the next one. Be sure to subscribe to the channel here if you haven't already and don't forget to check out my flytyingyarn.com store if you're looking for yarn for your fly tying needs. And then finally, I have another YouTube channel called SUV RVing that covers all of my non-fishing adventures. If you wanna check that out, links to all of those things and more will be in the video description.